Back to the Future, 1981. Look at this a time capsule. 354 miles on this 100% bone stock original Suzuki 185. This is a really cool piece. This is the first year of the reed valve induction motor. And it also has some really cool features. One is it is a 183cc, almost 200cc motor. And it's several pounds lighter than the 125 that it replaced. And it's got a lot more horsepower. They actually made a kit you could buy from Suzuki for off-road competition. They included a cylinder and a head and a few other things. So people would race these bikes off-road back in the day. It's got laid down shocks with five-way adjustment on them. Th this thing's completely street legal. It's got the headlight, taillights, turn signals, uh, DOT legal enduro tiles. And did I say 354 original miles? Ask yourself, where are you going to find another Suzuki TS-185 with 300 miles? My guess is this is probably the only one left on the planet. Um, the original paint is in beautiful condition. Uh, it's just been through the detail shop. They went through and touched up uh, some of the black paint on the engine and the frame and swing arm. And there was a little scratch on the front fender, so they repainted the, the, the tip of the front fender with the matching color code. Um, so... Uh, the original handlebars are intact, as are the mirrors, levers. Like I said, 100% original. Kenny, is there anything you'd like to add about this bike? Um, you know, we've we've brought one other 1981 TS-185 to the shop that was, you know, you you it, it. it was close to this condition, but I believe it had around 6,000 miles uh, to find an enduro like this with less than 5, 500 miles. I mean, the break-in period, I believe, is 600, as noted by the, the, the note on the tank there. So, this one's completely bone stock, right down to the tires, with the 1981 day code. All the electrical functions work perfectly. The headlight, the rear running light, and the brake lights. As well as the turn signals. When we're talking about this era Enduros, um, particularly the, the Yamaha DT series and the Suzuki TS series, the 185 is the sweet bore. As you go up the 250s and then eventually the, three, the 360s and the 400s, they don't rev as freely as the 185 does. I forgot to say, it's an absolute blast to ride too, and that's what it's all about. Fun, fast, light and affordable and guess what it's going up in value it's an antique you won't find another one like this anywhere meaning with a longer or with a higher um rev range per se you could wheelie this bike you could rev it out it's, it's extremely fun Typical Jap electronics, so never any issues. These are the type, types of bikes that we pull out of barns with 10,000 miles with a stock engine internals. And with a carb clean and a refresh of con consumables, they run like brand new. It's an extremely well-balanced, fun machine. Did you tell them how good the brakes are on it? It was noted in the ad, but the drum brakes are brand new, and, and certainly this is the best set of drum brakes on an Enduro from this era. Here's Kyle on the Mako 250. Can't even hear myself talk. Whoa, well, what have we here? A Mako burning race fuel that just pulled up. That thing's beautiful, Kyle. What, what year is that? Uh, 1982. Nice job, man. That thing looks like it just rolled off the showroom floor. Wow. Stay tuned, folks. We'll have a full video on this one coming up soon. Go ahead, bring her up. Kyle's been working here for several years since I think he was, uh, he's in college now, but he was in, in high school. How many years has he been working here? I said longer than anyone else on staff. Is that true? He has, he has seniority on everybody else here besides Kenny? <laughs> wow, how long have you been here? Uh, coming up on three years. Jesus, I'm going to be a little nicer to you, to you then. <laughs> Thank you. Nice job on that thing. Thank you. Wow. Holy moly. Well, back to this bike. That's the other end of the scale. That's a full-on 
uh, that, that bike's going to probably sell for eight to $10,000. It's a very rare Mako uh, Alpha 1, uh, the only one I've ever seen, actually, uh, certainly. Have you ever seen one of those before, Kenny? No. Actually, that's the first one that I've ridden. And it's the really a cool piece. We'll be testing that one soon. So back to this bike, 354 miles, bulletproof. It even has, look at this, it even has the original break-in maintenance, um, 600 miles. It's not even done, it's not even broken in. 600 miles is a break-in. So just a really cool piece. Mark my words, another one's not coming along here. It's not coming along anywhere else. If you like this one and you want it under the tree, buy it now. And we'll uh, help ship it to your house anywhere in the country five, for 500 or less. Junior will handle all those details. So um, do you want me to bring – is it really nothing less – oh, I want to show them all the paperwork and everything. Let's bring it inside. Let's bring it in and go over the paperwork. Yeah. Have, have they heard it idle? Hey, that would be cool to make that sound your, your ringtone. As a guy who's collected Yamaha Enduros, I've owned seven Yamaha Enduros from 68 to, to 71 personally, and I've ridden every uh, TS model in the series, and the Suzuki TS series blows the doors off the Yamahas. The brakes are better, uh, the motors are better, they're faster, um, the lights are brighter, you know, the <laughs> they're, they're lighter. Um, there, there's a whole lot of good you could say about the Suzuki TS series and from this era in the 80s it's just as desirable actually more than the Yamahas. Thank you Kenny. Speaking of lightness this bike is 68 pounds lighter than the 250 which is huge and it's almost 200 cc so it has almost 250 power. It's actually lighter than the 125. That's why it rode a wheelie all the way up the driveway when I cracked the throttle. It's got plenty of power. Reed valve induction so you can idle down to a crawl crack the throttle it won't stutter or burble it just gets up and goes so um this is a uh, 36 year old motorcycle I've, when's the last time you've seen a motorcycle or a car from this era look this good so it's got a little bit of patina on it um if you look closely again there was a scratch on the front fender um a little bit of the chrome has uh got patina on the on the um on the original mirrors and the bars Nothing major, uh, just a little bit of, I'd rather, I'd keep it original, I wouldn't mess with it, it's, they're only original once, but if you wanted to send some parts out and chrome them up, you can go as far as you want. Right now it's rolling into the New England Motorcycle Museum to be displayed here for the holiday season unless somebody buys it and then it'll be under your tree, if not it's under ours, so good luck bidding on it. This is another Kaplan America approved bike, I'll stand behind this one, this one's a dime piece, so good luck bidding on it and God bless America.